Good evening and welcome to this evening's much anticipated fireside chat. Now unfortunately I think a Steph might have disappeared off your screens in mid-sentence. As you know bringing you a live safari from the middle of the African bush sometimes comes with its ups and downs of signal. Now luckily we have this burning bonfire to keep ourselves company on, yes. the, hottest, on the hottest day of the year. Oh lucky, Brent. that's my fault. Sorry. Thank you Brent. It's, it's charmingly warm right now. I'm Yes, I'm going to try and shift back and make poor Brian's life terribly difficult. Right, so as I said, welcome to this evening's fireside chat and of course the much anticipated unveiling of the Birmingham boys' names. But before we go into that, James, yes. welcome back. Thank you. It is lovely to yes, have you back. Yes, I was away for a very long time. <laughs> it did, it, yes, yes. It, it certainly felt that way. Seven days. Yes, it felt yes. longer. Did it? Yes, it did. Well, that's good. We're, yes, we're very, we're I very glad to have you. My heart yeah. pined. Yes. 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 They are very good at lying. Can you <laughs> see that, everybody? They're excellent performers, these two next to me. Uh, they probably felt like it went immediately. Well, like speaking that. of performing, we did learn from you. Did you? Yes. Performing? Yes. Yes, quite. Good. Right. Excellent. <laughs> anyway, and on to that note, talking about the Birmingham boys. So, of course, it's come time now where we've spoken about it. James thinks has introduced the idea on drive. I've introduced the idea on drive. The fact that it is now time to give the Birmingham boys names. And why are we giving them names? Well, there's been so much in the way of the dynamics that have played out over the last year and a half, I would say. And the Birmingham boys have actually earned their right. They've got unique and individual characters. And the fascinating thing is that their dynamics are slowly developing in the way that they have evolved. So it's very, very important, especially because we get new viewers each and every day. And to be invested in telling these characters stories, a name is absolutely essential. And talking to a new viewer and saying, this is Birmingham boy number four, doesn't have quite the same ring to it as giving them a proper name. And that's what we've been up to. I think also the, um, I mean, we heard, I don't know if you've had this discussion while I've been away, but we had a big discussion about Cecil the Lion, and I mentioned him before I went away, and how Cecil basically changed the face of lion conservation. And if he had been called uh, male four of the, of pride six in, uh, in Hwange, so M5P6H, nobody would have known. And his plight would never have been broadcast, it would never have been shared across social media platforms. And the very fact that he had what is unquestionably the wettest name any lion has ever been given, uh, well, that's beside the point. The point is that he had an incredible name and it's done wonders for lion conservation. And certainly when we went to the Mara and we saw those four lions that they have there, they've got four rather magnificent names, I think, especially Scarface, <laughs> most terrifying animal. And uh, when we were there, there were some guests there that came all the way from South Africa to see one animal. And that one animal was Scarface. And so quite apart from the naming, uh, or them deserving a name, which I mean, I think is uh, biologically, they don't really care whether they have a name <laughs> or not, do not. they? Um, but, but I think that it's, it's beholden on us to give them names and hopefully, through their antics here, which we enjoy, they will take the message of lion conservation into the earth through you. The more people that get to see them and to become invested in them, the better. Yeah. And of course that left us with how do we name them. Yes. Um, and there was much debate and many, many emails about how we were going to go about this. And what we've actually, we've come to this point where in the future we've actually laid down guidelines, not rules, and just guidelines as to how we will go about this in the future. Uh, first of all, we will go for Shitsonga names initially. That will be our initial approach, and of course, taking into the characteristics, taking into account the characteristics of the animals as as a whole. So, if there's some identifying feature, something similar like that, that doesn't mean we won't use English names at all uh, if, if, if the situation is appropriate. And again, there will be exceptions to every rule. Sometimes the prize will take the name of the area they're in. Anderson Mail, of course, is a complete exception. It's not named after a characteristic. But we have laid down some guidelines as to how we'll go about this. And JJ, you were interested in whether or not the local guides here will use the names. What do you think, Brent? I think it's it's it's, it's quite an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, I think to a degree, I think they might, it, and, and and especially some of the Shangan guys, because I mean they've heard their language butchered mm. for the last twenty years, uh, quite yeah. often. So, so it could be very interesting yeah. to see. 
Jamie mentioned Shitsonga, which is a, the kind of overarching linguistic group to which the Shangans belong. There's some debate over whether Shangan's a dialect of Shitsonga or if it's the same language. It's really unimportant. The names that we've chosen, I think, are all Shangan or Shitsonga names, so you can use the you can use the two terms completely interchangeably. And we have run them by several of the, the camp members, but from Amanda and Herbie and Rexon, we've involved them all in this whole process. Right, so without any further ado, drum roll. Revelation. We want a drum roll. Let us announce the names of the Birmingham boys. So first off, number one, Nsuku, meaning gold. That is a nod to Blondie, who of course is not going to remain blonde for very <laughs> no. long. But his eyes and his coat absolutely will. So Blondie with his nick out of his right ear, very big, one of the largest of the Birmingham boys and probably the one with the fullest mane. And it's unlikely to stay blonde, as you say, as he gets a little bit older. He, unlike not Brent, but me, will not lose his hair. And so, Nsuku is how we say it. And that's the Shitsonga word, and it's spelt. I think it's important. There will be a yes, blog out. There will be a blog, a blog, but out. the spelling is very important. Out. And the spelling, N-S-U-K-U. N-S-U-K-U. <laughs> is that right? Yes, that is right. Great. That is right. Excellent. So Blondie, he's got big scars around his face, two puncture wounds, a deep mark across his nose. Does and he have those two? No. Is that that's, that's, that okay. is the next one. Ah. And so, on to Birmingham boy number two. And drum roll again. His name shall be Nena, which means warrior. Now he is the Birmingham boy with the equal sign on his nose. Right. That's going to disappear, of course, yeah. as his scars heal. I think that is going to vanish. However, he is a beautiful looking lion. Uh, he's one of the older of the Birmingham boys. Um, and he, I feel, has earned his title of the warrior. Mm. How much older do you think he is than the others? I think, I think Nena and Blondie are quite relatively close. I think there's probably a couple of months between mm, yeah. the youngest two. I don't think two there's and more than a year. No, there's no more than a no year. No more than a year, so. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then, of course, we get to one of the younger members of the Birmingham boys, one that we see more regularly than Nsuku and Nena, and that is Tinyo, Birmingham boy number three. Now, Tinyo means a tooth. And I think most of you, our regular viewers, will be absolutely on board with why we have called him Tinyo. And Tinyo has a massive scar above his, on his top left lip, that has revealed his canine tooth and will, I think, forever expose his canine tooth on the top. I think a truly appropriate yes. name. Yes, I Tinyo, like that one. tooth T I N Y O. That we spell Nena. We didn't spell Nena. Oh, Nena's no, an no we didn't spell spelling. Nena. Yes. You go for it. <laughs> well, the H is you good. take that. It is. It's it's N H E N H A. So Nena, N H E N H A. And if you're, it, it's pronounced basically N E N A, but the H just slightly aspirates it. So it's it's not quite. <laughs> but it's uh, it's halfway between Nena and Nena. Nena. Perfect. Sense of awe around. Yes, yes, warrior. Yes, oh. he's coming for you. Oh. Perfect description. And of course, he is one of the Birmingham boys we see the most, alongside, drum roll again. My favorite. Birmingham boy number four, whose name is Mfumo. And Mfumo means the authority, which I think is highly appropriate. He is definitely, in terms of physical size, he's, I'm, I think he's actually the largest Birmingham boy. I could stand corrected. It's been a long time since we've seen them all together lined up perfectly for that comparison shot. I think he is the biggest of the Birmingham boys. He certainly seems to get the attention of the ladies very often. Well, I say he wins the attention of the ladies, perhaps. Or well, he takes the attention. He takes yeah. the attention, yes. Yeah. He, he claims the attention of the ladies. And, of course, over the last few weeks, we have watched him heal from a massive wound on the right-hand side of his cheek. He was the one who was very cleverly called by, was it the viewer or was it you? Uh, no, it was the viewer. Uh, who called him Fredefort. Yes. Which uh, was after the Fredefort Dome, I believe, which was a, a meteor, a meteor the, landing site. One of on the, the largest meteor impact sites in the world. Right. And that was because he had a great big hole in his face, yes. full of and maggots at one stage. It is healing up beautifully, but there was it was touch and go for a while because it was no, it's not healing up beautifully. That is you're right. That is a, an entirely wrong description. It's healing up nicely. Yes. It is no longer looking quite so dangerous. It's 
very thick and pussy still, but I was a little bit worried that it was going to spread into his sinuses. And I think that the authority has earned his name because he fought off a seriously debilitating infection. You could see it was hurting him. He was uncomfortable, he was ill, he was just not happy. Uh, let's just get this straight. We're calling him Mfumo, the authority, M-F-U-M-O, correct? Yes. M-F-U-M-O. Yes. M-F-U-M-O, yes. Yes. Can also mean the one who ruled the authority. Because he managed to beat off a couple of maggots on his face. It was more than a couple of maggots. Was it? Yes. And yes. while Ten, fighting 12, them. 12, he conquered them. He conquered those Good maggots. Good. And while fighting the maggots, he did not forget his, uh, his mating rights. And Good he was, for him. He was on the job constantly while pouring at his face. That is very authoritative. Yes. And catching buffalo just, you know, on the side. Yes. So he, he's definitely right. performed extraordinarily right. over the last few uh, weeks. James Richard, you say that you're quite pleased that they've all, well, you're very pleased that they've all got Shangan or Shitsonga names. We are too. For me personally, I think it's... Um, it's an interesting one because most of the animals around here have got uh, Shangan or supposedly local names. Many of them, and we will chat about this going forward, controversially, <laughs> um, have got names that are either meaningless or misspelt or mispronounced. And I really like the way we've gone about this. We've gone to, to great pains to find out the correct spellings, try and find a name that is p perfectly relevant to the animals that we're looking at, and also to make sure that, uh, well, to make sure that the due respect is given to the local culture and the local language. And in so doing, it doesn't preclude us ever giving an English name to no, an animal. absolutely not. So uh, that's an important one to, to note. Just as long as you never bring up skinny pom-pom ever again. Yes, well, I was going to, uh, you know, I was we leading into hard. that because I think skinny pom-pom, of course, <laughs> is the best lion name since Cecil. I'm sure Tinyo is very grateful that he isn't called a skinny pom-pom. Yeah. Now, now <laughs> Cecil, <been> worse. <laughs> Cecil, interestingly enough, do you know where Cecil comes from? There was a, a 50s movie, I actually remember watching it as a child, called Cecil the Cross-Eyed Lion. Oh, really? And he made, they made glasses and put it on to fix Cecil's cross. So I'm, I, I don't know I'm for sure, sure but I, I'm pretty certain that's where it originally comes from. Oh, brilliant. It's quite a funny movie. Cecil the Cross-Eyed Lion. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Um, many of you are very, very pleased with the choices, and I'm happy to hear that. I promise you we did think long and very hard, um, and it, it really it went on yeah. for a while, the discussion and arguing, not arguing, Endlessly. but discussing backwards and forwards on it. It's the most really emails TV. I ever got from Graham Wellington. It's the yeah. most emails you ever responded to. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, most of you are very pleased, but would like a repetition, please, with pronunciation slowly, which is entirely fair enough. Or shall we go from the top, James? Yes. Would you like number to? Number one. Would you yours, like to no, I don't think it should be. <laughs> I think it should be. <laughs> All right. Who was number one again? Blondie. <laughs> Nsuku. Okay. Nsuku. N S U K U. Nsuku. That's a pretty easy one. It's just said as it is. Number two was Nena, the warrior. N H E N H A. A slightly aspirated H or N says so Nena. Which uh, I mean, look. They don't really mind if you don't say the aspiration. A very strict Shangan language teacher might be, uh, but you can you can pronounce it any -E n a if you're not in uh, the sort of Shangan land that we're in now. Then the third one, of course, is uh, called tinyo, the tooth. Tinyo, which means tooth. One tooth tinyo, many teeth matinyo. That's how it he goes. Does he does have Martinho. And he does, only see one but we can only <laughs> see one. So we'll just call him single tooth Tinho. It's not the, look, it's a very nice Shangan word. I mean, were you to call him tooth, for example, <laughs> it wouldn't have the that's same it. ring to it as Tinho, the lion. <laughs> right? And that's T-I-N-Y-O. And then the fourth one, Mfumo. Mfumo. M-F-U-M-O. Mfumo, meaning he who chased the maggots from the hole <laughs> in his face. And it doesn't really I'm mean that, it means authority. It does it? mean the authority, not the he who chased the maggots. Although right. he did, and he did very well. Uh, I'm, for one, I'm really looking forward to mm. using these new names. It, it really started to get to the point where you, you can hear new viewers switching, not here, you can imagine new viewers switching off when you're trying to explain the complexities of their dynamics and number three did this and number four did that. It, it's much easier to relate when you're talking about I'm today. positively terrified that I'm not going to be able to identify them. Uh, um, I, so we will require your help. The tooth we can get. The tooth and, and, and the, 
the authority. Yes. The authority has a hole in his it face, is. so he's easy. Can we go once more through the of the distinguishing features? So you said yes, we can. Has in, a Nsuku nick? has a nick on his right ear. Bottom right, isn't it? He has... I, um, is it? I remember looking at the pictures. Bottom right ear. Sorry, I'm touching my left ear. I I, think you, left and right, I'm not good at it. Okay, he has a nick in his right ear. And <laughs> deep puncture wounds, I can't remember, I can't confirm. Deep puncture wounds on his right cheek and quite a big scar across his nose. He's beautiful. He's, he's got the darkest mane um, in For terms now. of its spread and the fullest mane. But remember, these characteristics yeah. will change. Nena, relatively unscarred face comparatively, with the equal sign across his no nose and a nick, no nicks, no nicks out of his ears. His ears are perfect. Um, Tinio is, he's got the scar on his lip and he has got, his right ear is slightly floppy and he's got a little U out of the tip. And then, of course, Mfumo, he's going to have a massive scar for the rest, I think, for the rest of his life. I think there's going to be, once it heals, there's going to be a massive depression there. Okay. Yeah. Now, I've got a surprise that I think I'm going to spring on the two of you that I've been holding back. You're going to sing. Wait. Right? Heavens no. You're going to dance. Heavens no. You're you don't going have your to... guitar. <laughs> What's he going to do? I don't know. I, yeah. I, I, I'm waiting as we draw towards the end of this fireside oh, chat. I'm yes. too I, you, you all have to roar like a lion. Oh, do we? Oh, yes. Okay. I, I roar like a lion. Roar in quite the Birmingham regularly. boy name. Yes. 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 Or, or you could roar in a, a Birmingham boy of a choice. Oh, yeah. Right. I will do. <laughs> I will do Mfumo. Yeah, oh, you chose the easiest the one. The Maggot Warrior. Here we go. I'll do Nenya. Nenya. <laughs> How was that? That was uh, horrible. Oh. Are we are we roaring the name or? Well, I think we're running out of time, so we need okay. to make a decision now. Nena. There we go. Oh, and what would you like to do? Oh no, I'm now I'm panicking. Tinio. Yeah. Tinio. Nena. Tinio. Bye bye everybody. See you tomorrow at 0530. Nena.